Okay, hi. Um, I'm going to weave, uh, or tie in this case, tie and weave a new stool, an eight eyes stool made of wild wood. Um, so what I need for that, and I'm showing you this because the knot that I'm using for this can also be used to make something like a tree ship or bigger structures because the very same knot is all I need for doing these. Um, it's a way of tying together things that don't need any holes or something. And this is a, a wildwood branch, which is quite straight actually. This one isn't as straight, but they could be very much more um, wobbly and timey-wimey as they are actually not required to be straight at all for this kind of generating space-time structures. So I've got a dozen such branches, or it, were, it was two branches and I cut them into a dozen pieces. And I got a rope on this hand here, which is my, it's a, in this kind, it's a, a this case, it's a kind of polyester rope that has been tarred with wood tar. And, and I got this new, so I'm, I made one stool yet with it, which was good. Um, it's got that tar smell, wood tar smell, which I kind of like, but maybe it's a bit much, we'll see. So what I'm doing is I've got a spool of that rope on this side, and here's the end of it, and here's my branch that I want to begin to tie. So I'm putting down the end of this rope here on this branch, like so. I'm gonna leave a little over, like half a, or like, like a, a hand wipe, a palm, what's that? I don't know, not sure about the terminology. But I'm holding down the rope like this, with my left thumb on the, on the uh, rope and on the branch. And now all I ever do is the same movement. I grab the rope with my open right hand and I turn it over like that. Okay. If you're left-handed, you can just do the same thing the other way around, no problem. Um, so I hope I, I open my hand, my hand like this. I hold onto the rope. I twist it over, turn it over like this. And what I got here is a, a loop, which I will lay down over the the branch here. And you notice that this loop. In one way it closes and in the other it doesn't. So we'll see that by doing this kind of movement we're actually laying these loops down on one another so that they lock. Okay, that's important because otherwise we wouldn't have a knot. Um, you will notice if you do it the right way then or the, the way of the knot then it will not and if you do not knot it the way of the knot then it will not knot. Not, not at all. Okay, so this same loop we do three times. Okay, so first time we have, second time I'm grabbing the rope with the open hand, I turn it over and I lay down that loop on top of my branch here. So now I can pull this tight already because this is a cloth hitch. Right now it's the usual kind of clove hitch which is two loops and we're going to do three because all good things come in threes. And three of these loops have the beautiful, you saw me doing the movement, right? Grab openly and turn over. Um, three of these loops have the great uh, quality of actually interlocking, like they, they this is a loop that or not the that will not open by itself and I've done quite a bunch of these and they tend not to depending on your rope on your string maybe they do but usually this is something you can tie up very well pull it very tight it's gonna stay there but if need be it's the easiest thing in the world to either open it up again or just tighten it afterwards and since I, I'm using the same not also for my weaves, um, the kind of kagami weaves, we'll come to that later. That actually a 
allows me by using this um, this knot to continuously work my way around and go through the whole thing again and tighten it up afterwards okay so that is the first knot and we see we have three of those loops very close together and they lock into one another here okay now we take the second of our fingers what i call these branches or the what really are vectors in in the world of um, this kind of space-time geometry spherical geometry synergetic geometry like these things here in the frame i call this a finger because it points from one heart to another um, they could be called They are called vectors or um, struts or stuff like that. Sometimes in my cases, it's really a bunch of beads strung up. Um, look here. But that is what I call fingers because they point to the other hearts. Okay. So for the eight eyes that I want to make the stool in, uh, I'm gonna need four fingers around each corner, each heart, each knot. Okay, so I've got two here and I'm gonna continue th doing the same um, movement. I grab my rope with this hand, with the right hand open, and I move this hand over like this so that it loops. And then I, I drop down I drop down that loop over here and as I pull it tight do you see I can really snug this together neatly so that there is barely any gap between these two which is good because eventually as weight will go onto it it will open up a bit which is fine um, Oh, I just got a message that my phone is almost full. Um, I'll see how far we can take this this video, um, but maybe at least these two, because after that it's the same thing until we go all the way around our number four, and then, yeah, we'll see. So I, I got the first loop down, I hold the rope open, I turn it over and lay it down over this, and you see now I, I got a gap between the two, which isn't bad, no problem at all, because I can actually tighten this knot very much. Um, if I had a mild spike, I could do even better, I guess, but I don't. Um, something I want to get sometime. Okay, third loop over and lock. And there we go. Here is two of them. Okay, see how this goes. And you can do any kind of space-time structure with this knot, I guess. Um, it's going to be flexible, dynamic, and the structure comes from the shape and nothing else. So, totally fine. I'm going to continue making this. Maybe I'll get some more room free on my phone. And... Um, I think I'll just continue as long as this video can go now. Okay, so here's number three, finger number three. I lay it down besides the other ones. Open, over, close. Open, over, close. Uh, move it down a little because I don't want to be up at the very end of the branches. And pull that knot tight and open and over and close. Here's finger three. So that would be enough for the four eyes because that's got three fingers around each corner like that. But we want four. So let me take one more. Here's number four. I lay that down besides the others 
I open uh, and I lay the loop over the branch and pull this tight, hold on to it with my left hand and keep doing the same. One, two, this is two loops. I want three for good measure. And here's number three. Pulling it tight. Okay. Make it neat and close. Okay, so now we got four in a row. Um, and we'll move this one actually under the, the, the connection between the first two fingers. Okay, because I want to, to, to close the thing with the same kind of loops, but I want also to have the circle of the rope cross over. So by moving this, this um, rope between the first two fingers here, I get into a place where I'm, if, when I'm now doing the same loops over that one, this is the first one here, the first is the last, right? And I loop this over. But now I'm actually crossing the the first round of my of my rope, which means that I'm able to lock this very loop of of a, a knot that goes around in the corner of my geometry here. Um, I'm I'm going to be able to lock that loop in itself which is a good, a wise move, I think. Okay, and now I'm, I'm all the way around. Every branch, every, um, every finger was met, and I've got the two ends of the, of the rope on the same finger here, and I'm going to do a reef knot here, just to, just to, op uh, to close the, the end of my of my knot. Oh, that was not a reef knot. Sorry. Okay, this way around it's a reef knot. Pulling that close. So now the whole thing is kind of um, closed off, you know, closed system. And now I can cut off the excess of my rope. And since it's plastic, I'm gonna singe the ends. But you see how I was able to do this whole thing without much effort at all, which are without any additional uh, tools at all. All I did to the branches was took them the length of my cubit. It's a good, good length for making a stool. I cut them off with the Japanese hand saw, drawing saw, and I kind of went around with a knife to to get the edges a little more rounded. That's all. The rest was just a tying. And you see how this can, if this opens up to become the corner of our stool, it can actually turbine like this. This is the nesting and this is absolutely crucial to get uh, in the weaving of these structures. And what we want to have when this is over is that all of these t nests are turning the same way all around the, the structure because then we get pattern integrity and just to make that clear I've got this one which is the same kind of thing it's just um, a smaller scale so to speak and you can see it's not all the way tight anymore because I sat down on it and it was not strong enough for that with that kind of string but you see how this is turbining in the same way, nesting, twisting, and the same direction is true for all corners. And that leads to the fact that all of these are the same as in a kagome. It's a triagonal weave. So this one goes under here and over there. This one's under here, over there. This one's under here and over there. And that's true all over the structure, which gives it structural integrity of another kind, which is pattern integrity. Okay, so I'll continue making my stool now. And this is a, just a short demonstration of
quarter hour of how to do the um, the tying of space-time tree tree ships and the like geometries of life wildwood structures uh, or whatever you fa fancy okay take care bye bye